Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about parallel STL algorithms. Now, up until this point, we've been largely concerned with writing functionally correct code with C++. However, another very important part of programming is performance. So not only do we care about our you know, executables generating the correct results, we care about them generating these correct results in an acceptable amount of time. And we really care about performance at every single level of programming. So for example, you know, even with Hello World, you know, we would be very unhappy if it took two to three minutes to run some simple Hello World program. So we care about performance a lot, um, but how much we care depends on our specific applications. Now, what we're going to be looking at is the basics on how we can get some extra performance out of our programs through parallelism. So we have these very complex CPUs today filled with multiple cores and support for SIMD instructions. So instructions that operate on multiple pieces of data at the same time. And we want to be able to get some use out of these instructions and these cores on our processor. And one way we can do that is through parallel algorithms. So we have our STL algorithms that we know and are familiar with. And fortunately, in more modern versions of C++, and with the help of some additional libraries, um, we can get parallel versions right, of these algorithms that we, we know and are familiar with. So let's go ahead and get started and see how we can use these parallel algorithms to speed up our applications. So we'll start by creating a new example here, and we'll just call it something like parallel algo.cpp. And let's say what we want to do is sum up the contents of some vector. So we have a vector filled with a whole bunch of integers, and we want to add up all of those numbers here. So one thing we can reach for from our STL algorithms is this std reduce, right, defined in this numeric header. So we can use this to add up the contents, say, of some, uh, some vector in this case. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So we'll go ahead and include numeric here so we can get access to std reduce. And then we'll also include vector here, right? And I, of course, we'll have our main function. So let's go ahead and create our vector filled with integers. So some std vector of integers. We'll call it something like my vector. And let's go ahead and fill it with, say, you know, 2 to the 30 integers here. So we're doing this shorthand for powers of 2 here. One shifted over 30 times. This is going to be uh, equivalent to 2 to the 30 here. So we have a vector filled with 4 gigabytes total of integers, right? Quite a lot. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and sum up the contents of this vector using something like std reduce. So what we can pass is, say, the range of values through a pair of iterators, and then also some initial value if we want to. So you know what we want to initialize that sum to. So here we can go ahead and do um, you know, auto r for our result is equal to std um, reduce, and we'll pass in our, our pair of iterators. So my uh, vector.begin and then my vector.end, and then you know some initial value if we want to, so something like zero. So we're going to sum up the contents of this vector um, into you know this initial value here, zero. So it'll be zero plus the contents of our vector here. Okay, and just so we don't get, say, a compiler warning here uh, about an unused variable, we'll just return r here, this integer. So in this case, we just have a vector filled with zeros here. We didn't uh, initialize them to any special value. We're just going to initialize everything to zero. And then we're reducing all of that. So we should get a result of zero here, um, but we should still do all this work, right? We're still adding two to the 30 integers together. So let's go ahead and see how long this takes, right? To add up this very large vector. So here we can go ahead and use G++ to compile parallel algo.cpp. And we'll just call our output, you know, roughly the same thing, just parallel algo. And then what we can do is use time, right, this command line utility, to see how long it takes to run this executable here. And as we can see, unlike our other examples that we've seen in the past, it doesn't immediately return with some result. It takes quite a while to go through four gigabytes of integers. So, you know, this is all just running kind of behind the scenes inside of a single thread. And we see that it ends up taking about 11 seconds total uh, to run this application. So quite a while. This is something that we might want to speed up. And one way we can speed this up is through these execution policies that we can add to a number of our STL algorithms. So let's go ahead and go over to this other CPP reference page for um, these uh, execution policies. So, so since C17, um, we've had you know, these three execution policies, sequenced, parallel, parallel unsequenced. And since C20, we've had unsequenced. And these are different ways we can get, um, or we can influence what our algorithm can do underneath the hood in terms of parallelism. 
So starting off, we have our, our sequence policy, and this just says, hey, you're not allowed to paralyze this algorithm. Then we have our parallel policy, which says, hey, you're allowed to paralyze this algorithm through multiple different threads. So we can have multiple different threads running, uh, working on different parts of, say, this problem at the same time. Then we have our unsequence policy down here, and this says, hey, you can vectorize um, this, you know, this algorithm, meaning that you can uh, work on multiple different elements uh, at the same time through things like vector instructions inside of the same thread. And then we can combine parallel and unsequence to say, hey, you can use multiple different threads and you can use vector instructions here. So these SIMD instructions, single instruction, multiple data, instructions that work on multiple different elements at the same time. So these are the different execution policies we have. So let's go ahead and see how we can, um, we, we can go ahead and add this a parallel unsequence policy to our SIDreduce to get some uh, speed up of this 10, 11 seconds we have for our execution time. So these are um, defined in this header execution. So let's go back into our program uh, and let's go ahead and include execution, this header. And then let's change to reduce here to add our execution policy. So we can add this execution policy um, as the very first argument, right, to std reduce. So let's go ahead and add this std execution and then uh, par on C, right, to say that we want to uh, both paralyze uh, and vectorize this algorithm here, right? So we'll do something like that. Now, with these parallel algorithms, we often rely on the support of another library. So if we go ahead and go over to CPP reference again, I've got the page of compiler support for different features of say C++ 17, where these parallel um, algorithms and these, uh, uh, these execution policies came in. And if we go ahead and scroll down here into our library features, you can see that down here we have our parallel algorithms and execution policies. And there's a little asterisk around um, GCC. So these have been supported since GCC 9, but they require an external library. They require linking against LTBB, right, or TBB. TBB just standing for, standing for Intel's Thread Building Blocks Library. Now, you can install that on, on, on your machine, right? It may be diff uh, different based on, you know, whatever operating system that you're using. On mine, all I had to do was something like sudo apt get install and then libtbb-dev, right? That's really all I needed to do. And then I can just add that dash ltbb to my, uh, to my compile command. Okay, so now that we have that kind of background out of the way, right? We're compiling this application that uses this stead uh, execution par unseek with our vector. Again, let's go ahead and run our, uh, our serial version of this reduce one more time um, so that we can see how long it takes, right? So it should take somewhere um, on the range of 10 or 11 seconds. And then we can recompile this with TBB thread building blocks um, with that parallel version. So this took pretty much 11 seconds on the nose. Now let's recompile our parallel algorithms, um, except this time we're going to uh, uh, go ahead and link against LTBB. And then we can go ahead and run parallel algo with time, right? And what do we end up seeing? Well, instead of taking around 11 seconds to run, it takes around four seconds to run. So it's somewhere between two and three times faster. And all we really did was add one extra argument to our um, to our std reduce here, we just added this std execution par unseek execution policy here. So we didn't have to implement anything crazy with re related to parallelism. All we had to do was say, hey, can you please paralyze this for me? And we got a huge boost in performance. Okay, so that's the basics of these uh, parallel algorithms. Now I will say there are a number of parallel algorithms out there. So you can see even the algorithms page from CBP reference has an entire section on these execution policies and the different algorithms that you can use with these execution policies. Um, I'll go ahead and link below the video all of these different CBP reference pages. So just to reduce to this algorithms library, to these execution policies, and then of course to this uh, compiler support page where um, we can see the support for these parallel STL algorithms. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.